the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the joy of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please be seated. Dear sisters and brothers, we have come together this afternoon in this beautiful church to thank God for the gift of Margaret to all of us, to thank God for all the love that we experience from this good person, and to commend Margaret to God's infinite mercy and unconditional love. And I'm grateful to Margaret's family, to Bruce, Tony, Simon, Paul, Aneta, and all your families for giving us the grace of celebrating Margaret's life here in this church at Our Ladies. As you know, dear friends, it is in this church that Margaret knelt and prayed. It is in this church that she was fed with God's word and nourished with Christ's body and blood. It is in this church that Margaret experienced God's peace and God's strength. In the waters of baptism, Margaret Bruce died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share God's eternal glory. The Lord God lives in his holy temple, yet abides in our midst. Since in baptism, Margaret became God's temple, and the Spirit of God lived in her. With reverence, we bless her mortal body. Dear friends, as you can make out from the sanctuary, we continue to celebrate the Easter day. In the church, Easter day lasts about eight days. Easter octave is one long Easter day. What better day, dear friends, uh, to thank God for the gift of Margaret, a woman who celebrated life in all its fullness. So if you are able to, please stand as Jan leads us in singing the Gloria together. <clears throat> Glory to God, Glory to God, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. Glory to God. 
Let us pray. Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord, as our faith in your Son, raised from the dead, is deepened. May our hope of resurrection for your departed servant Margaret also find new strength. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. I invite uh, Pat and Pauline to proclaim God's word. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Think of the love that the Father has lavished on us by letting us be called God's children. And that is what we are. Because the world refused to acknowledge him, therefore it does not acknowledge us. My dear people, we are already the children of God, but what we are to be in the future has not yet been revealed. All we know is that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he really is. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The response to the psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. The, the Lord, Lord is my shepherd, shepherd. There, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me along the right path. He is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With these you give me comfort. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil, my cup is overflowing. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for ever and ever. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Please stand for the Gospel acclamation. Come you whom my Father has blessed, says the Lord. Take for your heritage the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my father's house. If there were not, I should have told you I'm going now to prepare a place for you. And after I've gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. And Kali will lead us in our prayers of the faithful. For Margaret, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that she may now be admitted to the company of the saints. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. For our sister, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that she may be raised up on the last day. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
for the deceased relatives and friends and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of our sister Margaret, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord who wept at the death of the friend Lazarus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here today to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And today, dear friends, as we commend Margaret to God's mercy and love, I would like to pray in a special way for Bruce. Uh, Bruce uh, and Margaret first met, I think, on the 24th of March, 1959. And it's been a long inning since then. And, um, and when, when, uh, when I met Bruce on the day Margaret passed away, I asked Bruce, Bruce, what kept you going for so many years? And um, uh, Bruce said, it is total honesty. Total honesty. We never had secrets. And, 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 and we kept going. Also, dance was a big part of their togetherness. Yes, dancing here and all the way in Germany as well, in, in different countries. And I like Bruce, not because I like Margaret very much, I like Bruce for only one reason. Because not many of you may know this, Bruce makes the best Jamaican chicken curry in the world. <laughs> and today, dear friends, we thank God for this great life of uh, love and togetherness that Margaret and Bruce shared and celebrated. We pray that Bruce may experience God's comfort and consolation. Lord, in your mercy. And I would like to thank God for Margaret and Bruce's family, Tony, Simon, Paul, Anita, for their three grandchildren, Robert, Lewis, and Layla, for all the crimsons. In fact, I've got so many names here. And Margaret would want me to mention all of your names who are here in church and also those who are joining us online today to celebrate Margaret's life. That is how Margaret made each one of us feel special. I think, dear friends, as they say, people forget what you said, people forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And Margaret made all of us feel special. So we remember all her nieces and nephews and cousins. We remember Michael, Andrew, Dennis, David, Robert, and, and, and their families, Tom and Trish, Nora, David and Kenny from Sunderland, Kathy and family, Jackie in Nottingham, Mervyn and Nigel in London. And we also remember Bruce's family, his brother John in New York, Sister Grace in Jamaica, Sister Angela in Canada, nieces Mitzi and, and Belinda in Jamaica, Christine in Florida, Roger also in Florida, and all of wonderful, uh, uh, Margaret's friends. Uh, uh, great to see all of you here, but still I need to mention Tracy Mitchell, uh, Ross and Christine Jones, Rob and Christine Jones, Pat and Norman Brumby, uh, Brumby Pat McNulty, Thelma Jones, Mary Hill, and all of us who've come together to celebrate uh, Margaret's life. We pray that Margaret may continue to be our inspiration. Lord, in your mercy. Today, as we commend Margaret to God, we remember all our family and friends who have gone before us. We remember Margaret's mom and dad, Christine and Stephen, her siblings, Michael. There's another Margaret in the family. Yes, Margaret, Mary, Catherine, Frederick, and Isabella, and Bruce's family, your mom, Rosetta, and your sisters, Delma and Lorna, and your niece, Jael, for whom we celebrated Mass in this church. We pray that all our dear and near ones may rest in God's loving embrace. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. And dear friends, as we all know, God could not be everywhere. Therefore, God created mothers. Today, we thank God for Margaret and for all the mothers in the world. And today, I would like to ask 
our Blessed Mother. And this statue is given to this parish community to celebrate Margaret's memory and to celebrate her great devotion to Our Lady. Today we ask our Blessed Mother to pray with us and to look after our good friend Margaret. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now, at the hour of our death. Amen. Please remain seated as we sing our second hymn, I Will Be With You.
please stand. Pray, dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant Margaret may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always to give you thanks, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life has changed, never ended, and when this earthly dwelling turns into dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with all the saints and angels, we praise you with one voice as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel or be seated. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your paschal mystery, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Mark, our Bishop, all the clergy and your people. Remember your servant Margaret, whom you have called to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like hers may also be one with him in life eternal. Remember our sisters and brothers and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that for the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. One of the last prayers that I prayed with Margaret was the Lord's Prayer and the Hail Mary. Bruce and Anita were there at that time. And Margaret always had that great faith when uh, saying these prayers. She was one uh, with God when she prayed. Today, dear friends, I suggest that as part of this Mass, we stand and pray the same prayer, the Lord's Prayer, together as one family. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, O Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our days. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all worries as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us bless and strengthen one another with a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Love of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Love of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Love of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Please kneel or be seated. Can we have a Eucharistic minister, please? Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away our sins. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. In the body of Christ, keep you safe for eternal life. You're most welcome to the table of God's love and mercy, either to receive communion or you can come with your arms crossed like this to receive God's blessing.
John, we pray, O Lord, that your servant Margaret, for whom we have celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. I now invite Anita to speak to us. Eulogy. Thank you all for being with us today to celebrate the life of the kindest person I have ever known, my mum Margaret. She was a caring, supporting and loving wife, mother, sister, aunt, grandmother and friend. Mum's, mum's generosity was legendary. Mum was born in Wheelston in London in 1942 and moved to Sunderland when she was a toddler, returning to London when she was 16 years old. Mum met Dad in the late 50s after being introduced by her mother. Apparently, Gran had told her of a lovely young man who played the guitar. <laughs> At the time, Mum was only 17 years old and worked a couple of jobs to keep herself in a little room that she rented. The relationship between Mum and Dad was clearly meant to be. And whilst they had very little financial means, their early years together were rich with the time that they dedicated to each other. Dad speaks fondly of walks in Queen's Park in London and evenings spent writing notes to each other whilst being sat together at the dining table. London is where mum and dad got married and started their family with Tony and Sam in being born, then moving to the North East and completing our family. Dad's job then brought us to Runcorn in 1974. We have so many wonderful memories of mum and I know that you will have your own too. We want to talk a little about the memories that mean the most to us and our dad. We hope that your memories of mum give you as much comfort as these have for us since her passing. When we were kids, we saw mum as being an instructable force to be reckoned with, so much so that my cousins would lovingly call her Auntie Vader. <laughs> us kids certainly knew nev we never had to answer mum back, especially the boys, and if they did, they would go running down the hall quickly, being followed by one of her skulls. I do recall the milk pan that had the dint which matched the shape of Simon's head. <laughs> Mum would say, you may be able to run, but I won't forget. Mum was all about family. Tea time was always spent around the dinner table, talking about our days. Whilst money was tight and family holidays were a rarity, we would have days out which were really important to Mum. We often spent Sunday afternoons in the car, more than likely ending up at a beach. 
This was something that I continue to enjoy in adulthood and not wanting to miss out, Mum, Dad and Simon bought caravans so they could join our family holidays at Black Rock Sands, spending precious time with us and Robert. With four, ki four kids, our house was always noisy, but always full of warmth and love. Mum had a knack of being able to pull a picnic or buffet together in a Mary Poppins carpet bag kind of way. At a moment's notice, food would be, food would be available for all those who visited the home. Mum was a natural cook, no need to measure or weigh anything. All done by eye and producing healthy meals for the family. As you can tell, we all grew up to be big and strong. <laughs> Mum taught us all to cook in the same way. While speaking of our childhood, my personal memories include Mum making all of my dance costumes on the old treadle sewing machine. I particularly remember my 10th birthday when Mum and Dad made me a trouser and waistcoat set and now as an adult admiring Mum's sense of adventure and bravery, taking me to, the, to Germany when I was 11 years old. This was the first trip out of the UK for both of us, and Mum guided us with ease through a journey made by coach, train and ferry across four countries. This is a holiday which I still remember vividly. Mum didn't just make my dance costumes, but she also did for others in the troupe. She was a central part of the backstage organisation of our concerts, keeping us all in line, but always managing to be anti-Margaret to everybody. A trait that continued to this day with my friends, even those that I've made in adulthood, calling her Auntie Marg. Mum was a fabulous seamstress, but also turned her hands to many other creative outlets, from her artwork to knitting and sharing a love of dancing with Dad. She also employed her own artistic licence when it came to singing along to the popular songs of my youth. During their retirement years, Mum and Dad enjoyed many other activities together, including bowling, line dancing and ballroom dancing. They both caught the travel bug whilst having many dancing holidays across Europe and the UK. Church was really important to Mum. She found a lot of comfort in her life, through her life, through her religion, and became a very big part of Our Lady's community becoming a catechist which she loved as it involved talking to and teaching the children of Our Lady's Parish. She was also a regular reader at Mass and a member of the Legion of Mary. Mum wasn't afraid to die because of her faith and that was a great comfort to her and also our family. As I mentioned earlier, Mum's generosity was legendary. No birthday was knowingly missed and she loved buying gifts for all occasions. Christmas was particularly busy at Mum's. We weren't able to get up the stairs for the collection of gifts and I would be drafted in, also once my friend Bernie, to help with the wrapping, making a production line to get everything prepared with Mum supervising. Or as should I say, cracking the whip to get the job done. She got real enjoyment from sharing what gifts she could with those she loved. As an adult, I enjoyed weekend visits to Runcorn and particularly our mum and daughter time. This became more important for both of us as my son became independent, allowing us to spend many a day in each other's company, usually shopping trips which always included cake and tea. We also had days out together sharing Mum's love for art with visits to museums and art galleries. As Mum's health worsened, these trips were aided by her wheelchair. Mum didn't like this much, independent as she was. I would jokingly threaten to take her over the cobbles in Warrington Town Centre if she didn't behave. Since Christmas, Mum's health deteriorated significantly and she spent a repeated periods in hospital. She suffered with delirium, which was unsettling for us to see and frightening for her. We spent time holding her hand and reassuring her that everything was going to be all right. The doctors thankfully managed to get this under control. However, we were faced with the reality that we wouldn't have her for much longer. The couple of months promised sadly became a couple of weeks. This time we spent with family and loved ones by her side. We made a promise that we, she would not be alone. I will be forever thankful that was we were able to have this time with mum. I wanted to make sure that she felt comfortable, safe and loved, pretty much in the same way that she'd made us feel as children. Whilst in hospital, I made a priority to help the nurses with mum's care and her move to Holden Haven avoid, afforded us the opportunity to spend quality time with her. There was lots of love, hugs, singing and laughter. Her last few nights gave us our final girls' time together, chatting, laughing and singing, 
and feed him mum brandy and lemonade and ice cream. I will miss her for the rest of my days. Kids do not come with a manual, but if mothering skills were to be graded, she would definitely get an A star from me. I take comfort in the fact that when I need her, I will remember mum and the wonderful memories I have of her. The lessons she taught will continue to guide me. I trust that you will also find comfort in your memories of her. Thank you, Anita, Paul, Simon, and Tony for doing your mom and dad proud. Yes, and for celebrating your mom's life with us here in this church. In fact, uh, Anita, you spoke about uh, how uh, is the generosity of your mom. And when Anita came to see me, I asked her, what is one thing that your mom taught you for your life? And Anita simply said, to share what I have with others. And I can tell you, dear friends, that was so true of uh, Margaret's life. And whenever I went home for my holiday, there will always be a card and a small gift for my mother from Margaret. You know that, Bruce. Yes, always. And I do want Bruce to know that today, this morning, a mass was celebrated in a tiny little village in India for Margaret. Yes. And dear friends, just three things uh, that, you know, as you know, I've been to Evenwood a number of times with Margaret, <laughs> to, uh, to Brindley and all those places. And, you know, as I said, we will miss Margaret here at Our Ladies. That's all that I can say. And I will miss her. Uh, but uh, that generosity uh, led Margaret to make this uh, community her extended family. So this parish was Margaret's extended family. In fact, when the history of Our Ladies is written, sometimes we limit that history to his story. We say about Father Adrian, Father Hennessy, and uh, Margaret's very good friend, Father Lucas, and all that. But then, dear friends, I also tend to think that when they write the history of this place, people like Margaret should be mentioned, like Pat Clough, yes, like Nora O'Malley and so many other people who make this community so very special for all of us. As I said, history also includes her story. So let us not limit history only to his story. It always includes her story. As we know from the resurrection experience, the Mary of Magdala who was the first witness to the risen Lord, to the power of resurrection in our lives. So today, I thank God for the wonderful community that Margaret helped uh, us all to create here at Our Ladies. This place was Margaret's extended family. And the second one from your eulogy, Anita, you mentioned that Margaret was not afraid to die. And I can tell you, dear friends, uh, my faith deepened when interacting with Margaret, when listening to her. And part of that, we cannot understand Margaret without her life of faith, hope, and love. That is how I would like to see Margaret. In fact, uh, we can ask ourselves this question, why was Margaret not afraid to die? As you know, dear friends, here in Runcorn, they call me the funeral father <laughs> because we do so many funerals in our, uh, in our churches. But then after a funeral, somebody asked me, Father, what happens after death? I just told this young person, you know what, I'll come back and tell you when I die, <laughs> yes. But then I did tell her, I don't know what happens after death, but I know for sure who I will meet after I die, and that is the risen Lord. I think, dear friends, Margaret knew that. That's why she was not afraid to die, because she knew who she was going to meet, and her rosary never left her hand when, uh, in, the, in those last days. She knew for sure, she was convinced that our Blessed Mother would look after her and that she would meet the risen Lord. As they say, dear friends, Jesus may not promise us tomorrow, but Jesus is promising each one of us who believe in love, not tomorrow, but eternity. Today, dear friends, that eternity belongs to your mom, to our good friend, Margaret. 
But then, dear friends, I'm tempted to share with you a story. I know it's going online, but I'm sure I wouldn't mind. There may be some comments, but Bruce wouldn't mind the story at all. Yes, because, you know, I always had a sort of a banter with Margaret, which I will miss very much. One evening, we had priests from India here, about four of them, after our evening celebration, whatever it is, you know exactly who I'm thinking of. So they were talking outside and Margaret was in her elements, you know, the company of priests, and then telling them all stories and all that. And I was busy in church. And when I went out, I saw these four Indian priests with Margaret there. So I just looked at Margaret and said, Margaret, you seem to like colored men. <laughs> That is what I told Margaret. Bruce knows this story. And Margaret, I never knew this. Margaret looked at me and said, No, I don't like colored men. I like colored priests. <laughs> Dear friends, when, when, when Anita and Bruce came to see me, I told them this story. And you know what they told me. Bruce said, You know what, Father? Margaret, what did you say? Margaret doesn't see color. These are exactly the same words that Bruce told me. Exactly. I think, dear friends, that reminds me of the famous words of St. Paul. St. Paul would say, In Christ, neither male nor female, neither rich nor poor, neither Gentile nor free, neither slave uh, nor, uh, nor, uh, nor free. But then, dear friends, all of us are one in Christ. That was Margaret's faith. That's why she knew who she was going to meet. And today, dear friends, that eternal life, that joy, that bliss, that peace belongs to Margaret and to all our family and friends who have gone before us. Please stand for our prayer of final commendation. Into your hands, God of mercies, we commend Margaret in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Margaret in this life. They are signs to us of your eternal goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to Margaret and help us to remain to comfort one another with assurance of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with Margaret forever. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. May the angels lead you, Margaret, into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sing a hymn to our Blessed Mother as I kneel before you. Mother of Christ, Mother of my... Yeah,
Jesus, we love you.